right, we're going to get started. Hi, Isaac. So your job is to write the complementary DNA molecule according to the rules of replication, the rules of DNA pairing. So I separated this into groups of three like we do. There's a reason we separate them into groups of three. The reason will be more obvious next week, but write the complementary DNA molecule according to the rules of replication that we went over in 8.3. We went over them in 8.2 and 8.3. So what would TAC pair with? What would CGG pair with? And what would ATG pair with? What are the mates of each of those groups? DNA pairs in a very specific way. We talked about the straight letters sticking together and then the curly letters sticking together, if you remember that. That should help you. <clears throat> I'll give you another 15 seconds or so. to answer the questions. Most of you are getting them correct. All right, most of you got them correct. T-A-C, the T pairs with the A, the A pairs with the T and the C pairs with the G. CGG pairs with GCC, the curly letters all stick together. And ATG pairs with TAC, which is just the reverse of the first one. So if you did not get those correct, make sure you, re you review Chargaff's base pairing rules and what goes with what. But that is all for our bell work today. So moving on. What happens during the process of transcription? So we're going over three processes this, in this chapter. We went over replication last week. We're going over transcription this week and next week will be the third one, which is translation. Hi, Christopher. Hi, Henry. So transcription converts a double-stranded DNA molecule into a single-stranded RNA molecule. So both DNA and RNA. The NA stands for nucleic acid. We went over DNA in depth last week, and we're going to go over RNA a little more this week. The central dogma. A dogma is a set of beliefs. And the central dogma of biology, biology states that information flows in one direction from DNA to RNA to proteins. There's three processes in the central dogma. The first one, like I said, we went over that one last week, replication, where DNA copies itself. The second one is transcription. That's what we're going over today. The third one is translation for next week. RNA is the middleman between DNA and proteins. DNA has a lot of information that needs to get out, but it's too large to leave the nucleus. So it sends a messenger out into the cytoplasm to build proteins. And yes, I want you to draw this picture. Another important part of this picture is this line right here and where each of these is happening. So these two, all of this is happening in the nucleus. And then translation, the making of the proteins is happening in the cytoplasm. 
So make sure you include the line between the nucleus and the cytoplasm in your drawing. So DNA versus RNA. DNA, we went over last week. The sugar is deoxyribose. You got the four bases, A, G, C, and T, and it's double-stranded. Two strands twisting around itself, making a double helix. RNA, on the other hand, these are the three major differences between the two molecules. The sugar found in RNA is ribose. It's where the R comes from. Its four bases is A, C, G, and U. U stands for uracil. So you won't see T's anymore. And it is single-stranded. It doesn't have the two strands that wrap around itself, just one. Step one, we break down this process into three steps, just like we did replication. Step one is called initiation. To initiate something means to start it. So the same enzyme helicase comes and unzips the DNA, but it has to find a start site first. In replication, the entire DNA genome gets copied. So it doesn't need to look for a start site. The whole thing just gets copied. For transcription, our bodies or our cells only transcribed a certain part of our DNA genome at a time. So it looks for these start sites. Step two is called elongation, making something longer. So free bases pair with one strand of DNA, not both. And the rules change. So C's and G's, the curly letters, they still stay the same. They still pair with each other. And DNA will still have T's that will still pair with a free floating A. However, the A's will now bond with the U, the uracil. So once we start talking about RNA, there are no more T's. So you have to pay attention to what your quiz questions are asking you. Is it asking you for a complementary DNA molecule or is it, is it asking you to make an RNA molecule? Because that will determine which letters you use. And the process is directed by RNA polymerase. Kind of directs and puts everything together. And step three is called termination. Termination, to terminate something means to stop. It's the same in Spanish and English, basically. So enzymes like ligase bond the nucleotides and the mRNA together to make a single strand of bases. You can see in the picture, that red strand is the RNA. The mRNA strand separates, and moves out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm to find a ribosome to start translation. And the DNA strand just rewinds and stays in the nucleus. So you can see that GIF, the RNA strand is being made and the DNA strand is just kind of winding behind it when it's no longer needed. And then it comes to a special terminator sequence where everything stops, the RNA separates and moves along and goes about its business. <laughs> 